Good morning in Oldish Land. How are you today? Thank you very much for taking the time to join us. My name is Karen Brown. I'm the publisher and editor of The Oldish, and I am your host today. Today on The Oldish, we are going to take a look at the articles that we published this week. We're going to take a look at looking out for your aging loved ones who may be living in long-term care or nursing home care. And of course, as usual, we'll take a look at news that's happening around the world of the oldish. So let's get started. And we'll take a look at what's going on this week on the oldish. We published an article on staying active and how it helps you fight chemo fog. So those of you who have had chemotherapy treatments know that the after effects of chemo uh, can have an effect on the cognitive abilities that you may have in the days after the treatments. So this article is looking at some research that said the more active you are, the more it helps you fight what can be very debilitating chemo fog. Keeping your colon happy, our favorite gastroenterologist, Dr. Mel Ona, if you will recall, shared his live colonoscopy with us a few weeks ago. And just as we were coming on air last week, sent over a link to uh, an interview he had done with a local TV station in Hawaii where he talked about diet and lifestyle that can keep your colon happy. So we published that on our Facebook page and we also published it on theoldish.com. So take a look at that. Prescribing benzos for seniors can be a serious risk. Now benzos is the short form for benzodiazepines. And while they may be necessary sometimes, you do really want to have a very close look at it because they are associated with an increased risk of falls and an increased risk of motor vehicle crashes. So take a look at that article and um, go with information in hand to your doctor if you are concerned. Have you planned a funeral lately? Putting your own in place or one for someone else? Well, more people are planning for eco-friendly funerals. A good percentage of people are still doing the, you know, abundant flowers, visitation for a day or two, and burial in a traditional casket. But many more are moving toward what we didn't have before in terms of options. Now, cremation has been an option for quite some time, but there are other options that you might be very interested in. Not only are they eco-friendly, but some of them are very much more cost-effective. And that always matters because funerals can get very expensive. Assessing pain in seniors. Now, that is something that is always problematic with people who have dementia, uh, particularly for those who are uncommunicative. But even seniors who are communicative can be difficult to assess where pain is concerned. They might just be very stoic and say, oh, I'm okay, don't worry about it. Patients who are not communicative may demonstrate behavioral changes. And these are the kinds of things that you might like to be aware of. If it's different from the norm, there's a reason. Take a look at some new techniques to deal with assessing pain in seniors. That article is on theoldish.com. Are you remarried? Are you about to be remarried? Are you the adult child of someone who has remarried? It can sometimes be a tangled mess when people start getting involved in inheritances with property, with businesses, with money, when there are children on both sides, and it can set everybody up for some really confrontational and negative feelings. It doesn't need to. You need to plan properly and make sure that things are taken care of. I heard the other day of somebody who had remarried, this person has children, and he doesn't have a will. He doesn't have a will at all, yet he has children from a first marriage. I don't know if his new wife also has children, but clearly there are going to be some difficulties there should he pass away without a will. So you might like to make sure that you are protected and that your family understands. They might not like the answers that you're giving them, but at least if you have plans in place, everybody will know and hopefully can set them aside and get on with the business of growing together as a family. How to safely dispose of pain meds. That can be a problem. You think it's really simple, but if you're looking after somebody who is aging in place and they need their cupboards cleaned out every now and then, or perhaps they've passed away and you don't know what to do with the medications, you can't just take medications and dump them down the toilet. You can't just take medications 
and save them in case you need them. It's more complex than that. So take a look at this article and you will find out how to safely dispose of those medications. Okay, so let's talk about an article that we posted on Facebook a couple of days ago. This is a little bit controversial. So a 95 year old woman who has dementia lives in a long-term care facility on the east coast of Canada. Her daughter was called to the hospital because the woman had been taken to the hospital with some injuries. When the daughter got there, she was horrified to find that her mother had bruising on both arms, both legs, both shoulders, both sides of her face, down her neck, um, bruising skin ripped off her arm. The facility says they won't talk about individual cases because of privacy. The health department says there has been an allegation of a fall. The daughter is calling neglect on the whole shooting match. There's lots we don't know, and it will come out eventually, but I want to talk about this in a more global sense because articles like this do pop up every now and then. And whether or not these kinds of incidents make it to the media, they happen. Sometimes it's neglect. Sometimes it just can't be helped. People fall. It's the way it is. Um, not that you can't prevent the injuries from fall. I'm not suggesting that. The facility certainly has to have a plan in place to do that. Um, walking programs to keep them strong and so forth. However, I just want to talk in a more global sense about what you can do as a family member to be as secure as you possibly can about the safety of your loved ones who may be in long-term care. Caregiving is certainly an undervalued service and we need to value it more. Um, there's no doubt about that. And the oldest certainly believes in patient-centered care. However, if you ask a facility what their definition of patient-centered care is, and you ask patients and families what their definition of patient-centered care is, you might get a couple of different responses. From the facility point of view, they define patient-centered care as involving patients and their families in care decisions, ensuring the patient is heard and involved in decisions concerning their health care, and that the care plan is focused on the patient's goals and the professional expertise of the care team. Now that all sounds really well and good, but if you ask a patient or a patient's family, and think resident as well, not just patient, if you ask them what patient-centered care is, they would agree with all of the above, there's no doubt about that, but they would add in things like eating meals when they choose, having their home look and feel less clinical and more home-like, and of course, having staff to patient ratios that mean that they have more frequent baths and showers and more time to get dressed in the morning and not be rushed through the whole process. In Ontario, the ratio, according to Dr. Jill Aiken, is 10 patients to one staff in the day and 14 patients to one staff overnight. The provincial average for patient hours of care per individual patient per day is 3.5. So that's the Ontario provincial average. And that's a goal. Doesn't happen all the time though. Uh, city run homes in Ottawa average 2.6 hours of direct care. It's not just a Canadian problem either. It happens in the US, it happens all over the world. Australia's Federal Secretary of the Australian Nursing and Midwifery Foundation says that residents, in their opinion, should be receiving four hours and 18 minutes of care each day, but they are currently receiving only 2.84 hours. So you see there are big divides. Budgets matter. They certainly play into this, so I would encourage you to pay attention to the healthcare aspects of any candidate in any upcoming election in, in Ontario. There's one coming up in the not too distant future, in June, as a matter of fact. But the budget to be able to hire, properly train, and then retain care staff is definitely a factor. And it's something that facilities will tell you matters in terms of why they're not hitting the mark. So what can a family do? Well, you can know the rights of the residents in your province or state. Now, that should be posted. The patient's bill of rights should be posted somewhere within the facility, and there should be resident and family meetings that you can attend. 
Understand how emergencies like power outages, illnesses that require a hospital visit, and falls are handled. Are they recorded? How are they assessed? How do they look at these events so that they can hopefully prevent a similar thing from happening in the future? You need to understand that. Definitely participate in all care plan meetings. Speak up and ask questions. Don't make assumptions. Don't let anybody just zoom on ahead with what they're saying. Stop them and ask the questions that you need to ask. Actually, it's a good idea to go in with a notebook with questions that you've written down ahead of time so that you have a bit of a plan of things that you want to learn during that meeting. Visit in person often and at different times of the day. If you typically visit after work, you know what happens in that care facility after work. You don't also know what happens in that care facility at 10 o'clock in the morning, 8 o'clock at night, 3 o'clock on a Saturday afternoon, and you don't have to do this all by yourself. Hopefully there are family members who are visiting your loved one as well. Just make a plan to go at different times of the day and different days of the week and see what's going on. Introduce yourself to the staff. I'm not suggesting in any of this that you need to be confrontational. You need to be professional and you need to be firm and you need to be an advocate, but everybody knows needs to know who everybody is. So by all means, introduce yourself to the staff. Understand who the nurse is, who the personal care workers are, who typically looks after your loved one. Keep a medication checklist. Understand what is being given and why it's being given. And if there are changes, understand why the changes are being made. Now again, for those of you who are members of the oldish.com, there is a medication checklist in the toolkit. Go access it and fill it out. You can fill out as many medication checklists as you want. So you can have one for yourself and one for every member of your family if that's what you want to do. Uh, it's pretty easy and it gives you all the fields to fill out. Address any concerns early. And again, make sure you have a clear understanding of the responses you're getting. You need to make sure that you have an understanding. I can't say that more clearly. A lot of people will just sort of let things go by because they're too hesitant to ask questions or too embarrassed to suggest that they don't understand. But you do need to know that you can understand this and that you should understand that within the context of your loved one who is in that facility. Take note of behavioral changes. As we mentioned earlier, behavioral changes, particularly in people who are not communicative, matter and they can indicate that there's something that has to be dealt with. It could be that they're not feeling well, but it could be that something's going on that you need to address. So things like anxiety, depression, confusion, responses to particular staff, withdrawal from social activities, signs of trauma like rocking back and forth. If these kinds of behaviors are different behaviors from what you know this person to exhibit, then you need to investigate why that behavioral change has taken place. It might be something simple. They might be cold. They might not like their roommate, but there might be something far more serious going on. And you need to understand that instead of just let it continue. Take note of physical changes, bruising that's unexplained, weight loss, poor hygiene, clothes that aren't kept properly or washed regularly. You need to understand all of this and why it's happening. And as always, advocate, advocate, advocate. We cannot say that enough. Advocacy is your best tool. If, however, you feel that there is imminent danger to your loved one, call 911 immediately. Don't start wandering around asking for explanations. Call 911. Let the professionals get the explanations and handle it. A lot of families are installing cameras in their loved one's rooms. And there are a lot of very discreet cameras these days, little cameras in the face of a clock or the eye of a teddy bear, lots of different little cameras that you can get to monitor what's happening. And I'm sure that if you watch the news like I do, you will see that a lot of the incidents that have been reported have come about because of the presence of these cameras. So some people like to put them in right off the bat. Some people put them in once something has actually taken place that they feel bears a closer eye when they're not there. So don't hesitate to do that. This is your responsibility, after all, to look after your loved one. Um, but bear in mind, too, that having a camera in their bedroom space doesn't tell you what's going on outside, in the recreational areas, in the dining hall, when they're getting in and out of a bathtub or going on a trip. 
things happen and um, you need to understand what's happening and why it's happening. And as I said at the top, it could be perfectly innocent. Older skin does bruise more easily, but constant bruises and deep bruises and big bruises, it's a whole other case and might need to be looked into. So while it is true that we catch more flies with honey, a strong and prepared advocate will be respected and valued. And that's you. Okay, so let's take a look at what's going on around the world of the oldish. I'm seeing a lot of articles this week on philosophies of aging care, switching to enhancing wellness instead of focusing solely on illness. I like that. That's a really good, um, a good change in perspective because enhancing wellness can lead in the long term to a reduction in illnesses and a reduction in side effects from illnesses. This is all very well studied and we have articles on theoldish.com that will tell you that. Ontario's Premier Kathleen, Kathleen Wynne is expanding the free pharma care program to seniors. Currently the program is available to youth under the age of 24 and seniors are covered through the Ontario Drug Benefit, although they pay deductibles and co-payments based on their income. The new pharma care benefit is slated to take effect August 1st, 2019. Lots of stuff to look forward to there, but that date may be after Wynn's time because as I mentioned earlier, there is an election coming up in Ontario. It's slated for June 7th. So even though that drug care benefit is slated to come into effect, if Wynn isn't the premier, who knows what might happen. The University of Florida is partnering with state transportation officials to solve the problem of at-home seniors, people who are homebound, people who are reluctant to get out, people who don't drive their cars anymore. They've started a new website called findaridefloridaorg and it lists all the transportation options, options for all 67 counties. It's searchable by cost, hours of operation, and contact information, and it does include taxis, public transit, nonprofits, and ride hailing services. Sounds like a good idea. Still in Florida, a 100 year old giant ficus tree is the subject of some controversy. That qualifies as an oldish, right? A 100 year old giant ficus tree. City staff are talking about cutting it down. So, a resident there, whose name is Karen Cooper, who is an aging senior herself, decided to marry the tree. You heard me, she married the tree. She hopes to preserve it. The wedding was complete with flowers, music, and a cake decorated like a tree. Among the guests was one city councilman and the bride, who hopes to avoid becoming a widow, was joined by many other women dressed in white who joined the vows which called for honoring and protecting the tree. Now, those of you who remember a TV classic called The Golden Girls might be happy to know that that same writing team is in the process of developing a new series called Silver Foxes. It's about gay retirees. The show is hoping to fight both ageism and homophobia through this new comedy. We don't have an air date for it yet. It hasn't been picked up by any network, but we'll see what happens with that. Now, this week on The Oldish, we asked a question I'm just going to open this so that I can read it. It had to, The question was, what would you tell your 30-year-old self if you had the opportunity? And I want to just go to the responses because some people were quite lovely and actually gave um, responses that we can add. I know I said moisturize, exercise, and lean in. But some of the comments are as follows. Sandra commented, don't worry what other people think about you. The truth is, they don't really think about you very much at all. And she's right. That's not an insult. People are very busy with their own lives and they tend not to pay attention to people around them nearly as much as we think they do. Mary Lee said, relax, you have 40 years to get it done. And Myra agreed with her, 40 years to get it done. Thank you for your responses on that. And we'll post questions and polls from time to time and, and see what, uh, what you're thinking out there. But for now, that's it, that's all. I hope you will all join us next Wednesday at the same time. I will put our website up here so that you can see where to find us at theoldish.com. That's where all of our articles are published. That's where you will find a lot of information on the subjects that we discussed today. 
And I do hope that you will join us next week as we have another edition of The Oldish Live. And remember, it takes a village to age a senior. <laughs>